Hello, Bible readers. It is Wednesday, January 6th. It's the day of Epiphany, and we are reading 1 Chronicles chapters 21 and into 22, Psalm 30, 108 through 110, and John chapter 6, verse 60, through chapter 7, verse 24. And that's where I'm going to start, because it's fresh in my mind as I've been reading quite a bit about this section of, of John. We're into this uh, Feast of the Tabernacles section. One of the reasons this is this can be a difficult gospel for us, is some of the significance of what's happening is tied up in metaphors and occasions that we can't really resonate with, um, or that we just are ignorant of. Uh, you know, the, the Feast of the Tabernacles, um, I'm guessing we couldn't write a long essay on what that feast is about, who's supposed to go, what they're supposed to do once they get there. Maybe we don't even know what a tabernacle is. I'm not accusing anyone. I'm just... <laughs> so uh, it's it's hard to know what the author of this gospel is, you know, trying to get at. Um, and so I've been reading quite a bit. <clears throat> um, should Jesus go to this feast? Who will be looking for him? What are they wondering about him? And not only them, who may also be there, but his own followers. How are they, what meaning are they attaching to whether or not Jesus attends this feast? Um, and so we get Jesus saying, no, I'm not going because I don't need to go. And I am not to be known uh, through my signs only. And whereas his disciples are like, no, 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 you, you've got to do your signs. That's how people come to know who you are. And Jesus is basically saying, um, well, then you don't really believe in me. If you can only believe in me by seeing the signs I do, it's about who I am and where I'm from and how I'm connected to God the Father. Um, Jesus has not come to show himself to the world, but to make God known. And that's the part that some of the followers of Jesus at this point are not understanding. Um, this isn't about himself. This is about making God known to all. Um, and then after he says, I'm not going, then he goes. Uh, he reverses his decision. Um, he responds, Jesus responds to the will of someone greater than his mother, uh, the royal official, the royal official and his brothers. Uh, obviously he's responding to God. And so I'm just going to read this last paragraph. The scene is then set. This is as we come into like the 14th verse of chapter seven. The scene is set for Jesus's presence in Jerusalem for the celebration of tabernacles. The question of Jesus's revelation of himself to the world has been raised. Jesus disciples, the Jews, and the people, they're all gathered in Jerusalem, and serious questions are being asked. Where is Jesus? What is he doing? Where is he from? Where is he going? Uh, a conflict unto death is underway. So you could say these first six chapters of John have led to this moment when Jesus starts to really be in the arena with all of those uh, who he's trying to present God's truth to. First Chronicles, I'll just go over that quick. David, uh, again, is sinful, then sorrowful, then punished, uh, then puts Jerusalem at risk, then repents. It's a similar cycle. It's a pattern that's forming here, uh, first with Uriah and now this. Um, there have been a couple others in between. Uh, but this time he's being sinful and sorrowful, whatever, all over this census. Um, and I think it shows it doesn't really matter what the thing is that he's that David is being sinful about. Because maybe we can't fully understand what about a census is being especially sinful. Um, and we could go into that if we were Bible studying. But the point is, whatever it is that David or any of us do that is against God's will is against God's will. Whether it's the murder of a woman you want or it's a census. Either way, David is showing he's trying to be God rather than um, be God's servant. But then, of course, he repents. Um, he prepares to serve the Lord, and grace recovers the upper hand. A couple words about our Psalms. Psalm 30 is one of the few Psalms written for a specific occasion, in this case, the dedication of the temple in 165 BC, is what we're thinking, when the temple was rededicated. Psalm 108 is like Psalm 57 and 60 had a baby uh, because there's a lot of echoes from those two Psalms put into 108. 
It's showing really how people use older scripture and then apply it to their daily lives, to have combined two uh, into one. Psalm 109 is unusual. It's not used a lot because of the theme of vengeance. Walter Brueggemann, who's the authority on the Psalms, uh, he says, the Psalms tell it like it is, and it is us. The Psalms tell it like it is life. And sometimes when we read the Psalms, we don't like what we see. Because we can be vengeant, full of, full of vengeance, and we don't like to see that in our scriptures. Um, we almost want them to be other. And the Psalms sometimes are just, they're us on paper. Finally, 110 is a royal psalm. God will fill the promise to fully reign in this world. Um, I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.